Poggy? Okay, pay out the believers. And then start a prediction, run it back. Hold on, I know you can't see. My shorts are kind of riding up on me. The shorts gamer has logged on. You think I'm I'm at 200 rides on the Peloton this winter and spring? You think I'm not going to wear shorts every day from the second week of May until the second week of October? I don't think so. Put me in, coach. Where the Lulu's at? They're resting right now. I got them in the freezer. He's caked up. Shorts all year round? No, don't. I don't, I because I respect you, so I don't want to go here. I always, laugh is too harsh of a word. I always chuckle to myself when it's a cold day and I see someone wearing shorts. Because I'm sure that, like, they're an adult and they're actually like, this is comfortable. But in my head, I've made up a narrative for them, which is that they think that, um women are going to find them attractive because they're like, look at how unaffected they are by how cold it is outside. They're wearing Old Navy shorts in the second week of January. Oh my God, I gotta, I gotta learn more about this guy. He's like an actual Viking. It's projecting? It's not projecting. I'm wearing pants. So I, the number of people may, saying so true has me realizing that this must be false. That's the universal truth of Twitch chat. My legs are just hairy. Bro, like they might be as hairy as mine. It's very unlikely that they're hairier. I'm like the hairiest guy I know. I'm scared, okay? Like, I'm, I'm, I love my body. I love the skin I'm in. I'm like a dove for men sort of guy. But I know this year, this summer, we're gonna be visiting Kate's uh, sister and her family a lot, okay? because they have a lake house. So we can go in the lake and go swimming and stuff like that. Go out on a boat and, and be like, whoa, we're on a boat and, and that's cool, right? But here's the thing, is two children, well, in, and my child as well, to be fair, but she's still a baby, so I will be closely supervising her. It's um, two, three Korean Americans, essentially, and then, the last known sighting of the Sasquatch when I take my shirt off. I don't know if I'm ready to take my shirt off and go swimming and have my nieces be like, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> I'm, I don't know if they're ready for it, but also, here's the thing. Shaving that shit sucks and I hate it. Waxing, which I did before our baby was born to facilitate skin-to-skin -skin contact. Look, skin having skin-to-skin -skin contact with your newborn child is priceless. There's nothing that could, uh, you know, ever take that away. But I would not do that shit again. It was not worth it. It hurt so badly, for one. And then on top of that, when it, it like got irritated and then when it started growing back in it was the itchiest thing I've ever experienced in my entire life so you can get like laser hair removal that shit is expensive and also hurts and also you gotta do like a year of laser treatments until that shit doesn't come back plus you're blasting your body with lasers the whole time so I think instead I mean I'm just gonna be like I'm just gonna try to turn it into like a learning lesson and I'm going to say, like, oh, this is what happens if you uh, smoke weed once. Uh, yeah, everything was fine for me. Like, I literally was completely hairless and had, like, an eight-pack. And then I smoked weed once, and I woke up the next morning uh, looking like Steve Carell in The 40-Year-Old Virgin. Like, I got to turn it into a learning lesson for them. Because then that deflects some of the attention off of me. And I, it's got to be something that you ingest, okay? Because, like, I can't be like, oh, I didn't do my homework once. And I, like, they're smart enough to sniff that out. We got a Joker card anyway.
Okay, we use our Joker card. Don't pick this up. We need another... I, I, I got great ideas here. Why do you have such a problem with winter shorts? Because it's cold out. Like, I don't... When I see people on a very cold day wearing shorts, I'm like, you're cold. I don't believe that you're not cold. And if that's my problem, then that's my problem. But I just don't believe you. Maybe you like being cold... I could accept that. But to tell me that you're not cold, I, I disbelieve you. I would be surprised. It's 8 degrees in van? What are you talking about? We're talking about in the winter time. You're, we, listen for two seconds challenge. Okay, hold on. I'm a nice guy. Now, lusty blood. I mean, we take. But we don't necessarily have to. My legs are thick and warm. All I want to see is the Venn diagram of people who um, people who wear shorts in January and people who have Googled how do I emigrate to Sweden. That's just because my personal hunch is that it's a single circle. And there's not anything, there's nothing wrong. I live in Sweden? Okay, well then, you know what? You have an excuse. I live in Sweden and I wear trousers? Well, you know what? The world don't move to the beat of just one drum. Nothing's wrong with Sweden. Nothing's wrong with Sweden, man. I mean, Finland? Maybe, I don't know. They keep asking me how I feel about the World Hockey Championships. Hey, NL. I'm from Tampere. How did you like the Ivan Klinka Memorial Cup this year? I didn't watch it. I was watching the NHL playoffs. Actually, I was doing the dishes, but... What about Denmark? I'm Look, let's not turn this into NL goes off on the countries that were previously in the Kalmar Union. I got nothing against the countries that were in the Kalmar Union. As far as I know. I would like a bomb. Members only. I don't have any money. I would have, but I don't have any money. I can't do this. Denmark is made out of literal excrement from Sweden. What are you? Wasn't Denmark the? That's the thing that always threw me in Europa Universalis. Den, Denmark is the smallest of the of the Kalmar Union nations, but they were like leading the Kalmar Union. Why doesn't? Nope. Why doesn't Sweden, the largest of the Kalmar Union countries, simply eat? the other countries it's a population density thing oh yeah okay well that makes sense they're saving it for sweeps week it is a Futurama reference it's true I don't know I don't know anything about trade I'm trapped. Help. Don't give me a, a minus two for my Kalmar Union take. You're lucky I even know what the Kalmar Union is. Oh, he doesn't have a, a nuanced view on Scandinavian politics of the Middle Ages. Come on. Ha have some mercy. Help. I can't believe he's back. I'm just happy we're still getting um, damage upgrades in Isaac. A certain bald individual on YouTube told me it couldn't happen. And yet here we are. Believers feasting. No, it was me. It was me. 
I'm, of course, I know him. He's me. This episode, by the way, we like to episode, uh, dedicate all the streams to, to people out there. This one's dedicated to uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. I'd like to congratulate him on his new show on Disney+. Plus. Looking forward to seeing what it's all about. Um, big ups to Obi-Wan Kenobi. And honestly, you love a great comeback story. He'd been kind of quiet for like, I don't know, like almost 20 years. And now he's back, man. Like, I can't believe it's been almost, uh, it's been almost two decades since the last time we saw Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, use his light sword to fight an asthmatic robot with four arms. It's hard to imagine. And I was just asking myself, I wonder what that, wait, wait as soon as I saw that in the movie, I asked myself, I wonder what that guy's up to between the events of this movie and the next time we see him in Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. I wonder what he ate for lunch on the 23rd of Staruary. I wonder what kind of adventures he got up to. I wonder what his grocery list looks like. Yes? Mmm, yes. Okay, I didn't do the math. I thought I would have more HP than this. <laughs> Stop acting like you're not going to watch it. Uh, I'm not going to watch it. Hold on, take me back and re-roll. Take me back and re-roll. I haven't watched Book of Boba Fett yet. I, on, I I mean, I don't care about the, the Star Wars characters I already know about. I want to learn about new Star Wars characters. I'm done with Obi-Wan Kenobi, man. Like, I just... It's a good item. I just don't care about him. I've, I've, I've seen his whole arc, man. I, I, I They don't need to do the Star Wars thing where it's like, first you saw him as an old man, then you see him at, like, the prime of his strength, and then you see him as, like, a little baby, you know? And, well, here's uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi gets rescued by Qui-Gon Jinn in the swamps of Dagobah, where he was uh, previously just a little street urchin stealing midichlorians from people around him using his force powers, but, like, I want to see, like, some new stuff, man. I want to see, like, a Star Wars show that's just, it's just, like, about, like, a dude trying to fucking make it, you know? Like, it's just about, like, a guy. I think, here's what I'm thinking, okay? Matt Damon plays Wall Hanting, okay? He's a force-attuned individual. But because of where he's grown up and the friend circle that he has, he doesn't want to admit that he's uh, force attuned. In instead, his only goal in life is to never rise above the station of his friends, okay? Uh, so he, he, he sometimes shows his force powers when necessary, like when someone at a bar says he's not wicked fucking smart. But otherwise, he's just like, you don't talk to me like that. I'm just like you. I'm just a dumbass like you. Don't, why are you talking to me like I'm a smart guy when I'm a dumbass like you? What the fuck are you talking about? You know? And then Ben Affleck could play like, I don't know. Maybe his name could be like... Tom McKenzie. And he could... He's like, if you don't leave this fucking Kyber crystal mine, I'll fucking... Freeze you in carbonite myself, you stupid sack of fucking shit. And then it could be like... It, I mean, I'm just thinking it could be like a great movie. Now, I would love it if it were possible that we could get Robin Williams to play like a space therapist that could help Matt Damon come to terms with the fact that he is meant to be a Jedi. You know, he's meant to be at the Jedi Academy on Dantooine, and then he's meant to pick the kyber crystal for his lightsaber, and then, honestly, he's meant to go to Coruscant to stand in front of the Jedi Council and see if he's ready to, to find a master that he could Padawan for. But he, it takes him a while to do that. So I'm thinking instead, we take Rebel Wilson for that role. Rebel Wilson, from the new Netflix original um, senior year, and she could be like, it's not your fault. Well, actually, it is your fault, but that's okay. Yeah, 
We done? She could be like, like I think it could, she's the obvious choice. You're absolutely right. And we'll call the movie um, Good Will Hunting. I mean... What is this? Thank you. Incredible writing. Thank you, thank you. Oh, we gotta get Josh Gad in there somewhere as well. Maybe he could play like a wisecracking droid or something like that. That also, you know, is a droid that uh, originally it was involved in like a space cabaret or something like that. So he's always breaking into show tunes. But now they've reprogrammed him to be like a combat droid. But he sings while he engages in the combat or something. But also he's a bloodthirsty assassin. Something along these lines I think could really work. Who's the love interest? It's Star Wars. There's no love interest. Um, but Mad Damon does fuck one of those blue tentacled aliens. The Twi'leks. But they're not in love or whatever. And honestly, we want this story to be kind of empowering. So it's actually more like she fucks him. And then he's like, what the fuck? I'm getting fucked right now by a fucking alien. What? This is wicked fucking weird. Uh, this is a great item. Dark arts. That's, that's a good item. We could use that. Hey, what are you doing here? Don't oh, get out of here. Hey, you, if you don't stop exploding, I'm going to freeze you in carbonite myself. Oh, man. I love Boston. I wish it was real. Okay, how about one of those? Just brings it out. I, I didn't look at chat for like 30 seconds there. That felt amazing. Bostonian here? Oh, wait. I don't have a problem with Boston. My only problem with Boston is why do they have a problem with me going to their establishments like you know going to a restaurant and being like you know hey can we have a table for two and they're like yeah i bet you fucking like that wouldn't you i'm sorry i heard that i heard that the first time you're here you have to eat at legal seafoods it's the only place in the city where you can get a 40 dollar plate of fish and chips here's your fucking card no, there's your fucking card, your fucking card and chips. If I wanted your credit card, I'd ask for your fucking card. But I got, I've got your fucking card right here. How you like them apples? Dude, they're always saying that in Boston. They're always saying, how do you like them apples? Please stop, I'm begging you. Why? Does it hit too close to home? We do grow a lot of apples in Massachusetts. Wicked fucking smart with the apples. See, my boy's wicked good at running orchards. That makes sense, because you run... Uh, you, you, there's a lot of orchards where I grew up, too, in Ontario. It's not that far away from Massachusetts. Geographically, like culturally, they couldn't be more disparate. In Boston, people pretend to be rude, but they're actually friendly. In Ontario, people pretend to be friendly, but they're actually rude. So like Japan? Yeah, but I think people get like lost in the sauce on Japan. People always, well, not people, but like, you know, the occasional person, they'll say something like, um, well, the thing with Japan is everybody is very polite to you, um, but internally, they might be thinking that they wish you weren't in their country. And I'm like, okay, that sounds pleasant, honestly. Because if they don't want me in their country, just wait, I don't know, like six days? And I'll go to the airport and I'll go home to where I live. In the meantime, thank you so much for being like polite and nice to me and making every service like customer forward and, uh, you know, treating me like I'm the most important person in the establishment. And also, it's so clean everywhere. There's, there's decorum. Nobody on like 
the buses is uh, is listening to Bluetooth speakers as loud as they possibly can. Everybody's just minding their own business, treating the environment around them with the respect that they feel it deserves. Like it's after I leave, you can talk as much shit as you want. Well, I'm here if you if you could just like you know treat me with a little bit of respect. That's I'm not saying I'm not going to come into your establishment if you don't, but it's it does feel nice. It feels ni I'm trapped. Okay, don't leave yet. That's what I was telling like my mom. And you can bat chest this if you want. But I just want you to know that actually I think bat chesting is like the most bat chestable thing. Because instead of actually having like some genuine enjoyment for something, the last bastion for like any form of criticism is just a sense of ironic detachment from everything where enthusiasm itself and passion is what becomes disincentivized because it opens to you to the vulnerability of being mocked, okay? So if you don't have anything that you bat chest for, but you are bat chesting other people, you need to find something in your life worth bat chesting for, okay? Because that's just sad. Didn't you say ad hominems win arguments? Uh, he, they, you referenced a logical fallacy, bad chest? You referenced a logical fallacy. They referenced a lot. Lo I love logical fallacies. Ah! Logical fallacies are my favorite way to determine who wins an argument. Bad chest, bad chest. Okay, anyway. I was telling my mom, like, my favorite tourist destination to visit is Japan. And it has very little to do with, like, the actual, like, tourist attractions. The food is good, don't get me wrong. But it's really just that, like, as a tourist, it's very pleasant to be there, you know? It's easy to get around. Coming from North America, it's it's not particularly expensive. And I'm not saying like there's no crime that like ever happens in the country, but it like feels safe. Sometimes I don't even feel safe in Vancouver, my home, particularly when I drive. And it is, it's also mega clean. I can't stress this enough. Didn't one guy mug you in Japan? No, okay, here's what happened. It doesn't work, huh? Um, I was waiting in an intersection and a man on a bicycle came over to me, held out his hand and then pointed at his palm to say, like, give me money. And then I said, no, sorry. And then he just kind of like looked me in the face for a little bit and then he rode away. So I, if, I mean, if that's as bad as the muggings get, that's not so, I can live with that. It's the most violent Japanese crime. They're still looking for him to this day. Give me spider mods, just quality of life, man. He's memorizing my face. Good luck finding me in a country of uh, 127 million people. Probably wouldn't be too hard now that I think about it. No, you don't get me. I'm not saying the country is perfect by any means. I'm just saying, like, as a tourist, it's a very pleasant place to visit. I just like the vibe, man. They got a good vibe. What am I doing with Wheel of Fortune? What am I doing with anything? They passed the vibe check. It's the same thing, and, and you, you know, obviously there's some bias here. When people are like, hey, I'm coming to Vancouver for like a, a weekend for a conference this year. What should I do? And honestly, I'm like, you should just vibe, man. I don't know. Like, maybe you should go see like Stanley Park. I don't know if you're like in love with trees or whatever. 
But you should basically just like go to restaurants and, and kind of chill out. Hi, honey. Hi. Gas Town? You should probably avoid Gas Town. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Daddy too? Did you have a fun time at Activity Gym, honey? Did you have fun? Yeah. What'd you do at Activity Gym? You climbed? Yeah. Did you go down a slide? Yeah. Did you do parachute time? Yeah. Very good. Did you do bubble time? Yeah. Yeah. How many bubbles did you pop? Mommy is informing me that you did not participate in bubble time. What do you have to say for yourself? Two bubbles. Okay, that's pretty... Oh, no. Well, they do it. They have a lot of turnover. What? Well, I will say... I have nothing but respect for the people at the establishment that have worked there as long as we've been taking her. Because I think if I worked at a baby activity gym, I would be looking for new employment within like one week. Especially like, so some of the classes I go to, I'm the only person there. Like me and my baby are the only people there. She's just playing with the door stop. So, like, I get a private class in the activity gym, which is fine, but it sucks for the instructor because they're singing, like, all these songs that, you know, they're, like, 23 years old. They don't want to sing The Wheels on the Bus a thousand times a day. They want to sing probably, like, Body by Meg The Stallion. They want to be, like, body yaddy 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 body yaddy yaddy you know? But instead, they're going, like... B U B B L E S. These are the bubbles we. And then, my daughter, you know, she's a girl boss. She's got a mind of her own. So sometimes they're like, it's time for parachute time. And she's like, I'm not going to participate in that. So then they're like, I don't know, like legally obligated to do all of the steps. So they're just singing the songs and playing parachute time, like with themselves. And my daughter's just running through the rest of the gym going like, ah, like Monka Giga featuring Robert Downey Jr. So I, I think it would it would definitely like drive me insane. She do be like, ah, psycho baby, psycho baby. What are you doing? Well, like I'm supervising her so that if she falls down. Like, I pick her up, you know? It might surprise you. I think it's counterproductive to, uh, to stop her from falling down. Falling down, in some ways, is like nature's way of telling us to not do the thing that way. I thought you'd be under the parachute. They won't let the adults... That's like the first announcement they make, is that the equipment is for kids only. Whoa, look at that. She got the damn sea foam. Look at that. Holy cow. She's... Nope. <laughs> I just, last night when I was taking the garbage down, I saw the dumpster and I thought to myself, you know, it's been a while since we... Oh my God. <laughs> it's been fun. We have fun here. We're just... We're just having, uh, we're having a bit of a laugh. Just enjoying ourselves. Drip, drip, drip. What are you doing, honey? Okay, she's got a, she's got a bag of dice. Do me a favor, just make sure that's tied up tight. Okay. Mommy too? Okay. Babies be crazy, man. <laughs> like, sometimes she'll be, like, playing with something she shouldn't play with. Because if she puts it in her mouth, she could choke on it, right? 
We take it away from her, and she's like, oh, you didn't want me playing with, like, that lid to a, a marker? Well, how about I pick up a bag with 85 dice in it that are all the exact circumference of my windpipe? I can do this. I can't do this. Do this. Well worth it. Why do you have a bag with 85 dice? I don't know. Like, when we were playing Magic, got a bunch of dice from, like, pre-releases and stuff like that. And then, you know, there was, like, three years where, like, you know, you'd get bored at PAX, and you'd be like, I don't know, let's just go buy some dice or something like that. And then they'd have, like, a little container with dice, and you'd be like, ooh, you know, green dice. I don't have any of those. And you just, you know, buy buy a, buy some dice. Now we got one big bag full of them. I uh, should not have been hit there. I'd like to apologize to myself. What year did you start playing Magic? I think it was like 2015. I played from the tail end of Magic Origins through... Battle for Zendikar, Eldritch Moon, Shadows over Innistrad, and I I dropped out right at the start of Kaladesh. It was a terrible year for Standard. Maybe that's a blessing because it allowed it it allowed quitting to be so much easier. I think my best ever, I'm trying to think my best ever performance in, in a Magic the Gathering event. <laughs> Including like casual events. I think I might have gone two and two at a Friday Night Magic once. Definitely, I'm, I'm going to die by the way. Definitely never went three and one. You know what, I think I went two and two at some pre-releases too. I was kind of like, if we're talking about the best to ever do it, and by the best to ever do it, I mean consistently winning round one and then losing three in a row, my name's got to get brought up, okay? Yummy. Fake HP. Mmm, microplastics. Yum, yum, yum. Plus two. Oh, you shouldn't have. Thank you. Nobody said that? Mm, they were thinking it. Maybe one of these. Maybe an Eternal Heart. Maybe a thousand Spirit Hearts. Surely, put me in the clip. It's Isaac 2022. We got five remaining red chests. Surely one of them has a Spirit Heart. Wait for it. Don't, don't get cocky. One of them's got to, dude. It's just math. Clueless. Clueless. Tears down. Clueless. Health, okay, well, we got a health upgrade, so now it's like we lost and we won at the same time. There you go. Pog, Pog. He is pogging. How good are these lost bombs? Because... My assessment of them is that they are a f six and a half out of ten. Help. They're okay. Confirmed. The Isaac, the accurate Isaac Raider has logged on. We need some... Oh, no. We need some insanely good luck here. Like, we need these chests to pop off. Thank you. That's also fine. Streamer room incoming. I love a streamer room. I wish it was real. Or scapular can carry you. Ah, that's pretty true. What about that half a heart? Have you ever played Isaac before? It's takeable. It's takeable. 
It's takeable. It's not takeable. No, no, no. Okay, well then that's fine. As long as you own it. My actual... Oh, no. My actual problem is that I haven't been using uh, Judas's Curved Sword because I have uh, Illuminated Bulb. But getting the invincibility and the extra damage from the sword is way worth losing Illuminated Bulb temporarily. Thank you. Peloton this morning? You ain't even got an axe, okay? Except for that one day I skipped because I had a horrible heartburn the night before and woke up at 3 a.m. thinking I was engaged in cardiac arrest. That day I skipped, but every other day, I'm there, man. It's almost every day, bro. I can't take it yet. Can't take it yet. What did you eat to give you such heartburn? Honestly, I don't even want to tell you because you're going to make fun of me. Um, but I don't... I, before I say this, I want to tell you that I don't think it's because the food was spicy. I think it's because the food was oily. I can handle the spice. Nope. It was not Subway, okay? Don't debase me. It was Indian food. I had a, a lentil curry. I had a chickpea curry. And then it like... 3 a.m., I, I woke up uh, feeling like an elephant was sitting on my chest. And I was like, what? And then I went back to bed and I woke up the next day and I was like, I'm okay. But, you know, just in case that was a cardiac event, <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to... I'm not going to do a ride today because I don't want to, like, Mr. Big myself, you know? You know what I'm sick of, by the way, because someone said that's a symptom of a heart attack? Yeah, but, like, here's the thing. You guys been looking up the monkeypox symptoms? I'm so sick of this shit. You know what the monkeypox symptoms are? Fever, sore throat, coughing, sneezing, fatigue, general malaise. That shit is a symptom of every disease. Okay, and the pox, all right? The blisters, but, like... <laughs> We gotta do better at identifying the symptoms of these diseases, man. Any infection has exactly the same... Okay, and morbing. I forgot about the morbing. Lesions that fall off of your body. Okay, I left that one out to make the joke make sense, okay? I'm not saying doctors don't know anything. However, <laughs> no. But like I the the my naive idea of what a doctor does. By the way, lick my hadron. Thanks for the gifted subscription. Thank you. Is that a, you go to a doctor and you go, "I have a sore throat, but no fever. What do I have?" And they go, "Oh, that's diverticulitis or something like that, right?" But that's not how it works. I believe you go in and describe their symptoms. And then they give you a battery of tests. And then the tests give them an idea as to what you're actually going through. It's crazy that doctors go through school taking so many tests. And then they turn around and then they put that punishment on their patients. Like, I get it. Just because you went to school for 25 years, now you're ordering me a battery of tests? All right. The, my, the insane amount of minus twos, which is crazy because many people are saying it. I'm taking it. I'm saved a little. But like, I think the internet doctors are now useless. And by that, I mean WebMD. Because any, every infection has like the same symptoms. Fever, sore throat, night sweats, morbing, craving human flesh, you know, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. They're all the same. Could be COVID, could be monkeypox, could be the bubonic plague, could be meningitis, could be the mumps, you know. 
Morbin, it's over for me. I mean, you better hope it's over for you, because if not, I mean, Morb or be Morb is what I've always said since about a second ago when I said it for the first time ever. Could be a crazy little thing called love. Um, are your symptoms you just can't handle it? You just can't get enough? Well, get ready. You've come down with a case of a crazy little thing called love. Are you attempting to be cool but failing? Are you attempting to relax but you can't? Well, get ready. Crazy little thing called love. Who sings that? I'm going to say that that's... Roy Orbison. Who sings Crazy Little Thing Called Love? That's not Roy Orbison. That song is like 30 years newer than Roy Orbison. Queen? Really? He sounds so much like Roy Orbison, dude. I was My second guess was going to be John Cougar Mellencamp. <laughs> That's Freddie Mercury? That's crazy talk. Dwight Yoakam did a great cover. Also true. Also true. All right. Well, um, we won. I can't believe it, but we won. We'll call that Isaac 3, and then I'm going to go to the bathroom. Slash marker. Isaac 3. I'll see you 